Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about exercise variation when doing very high frequency training. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Uh, because as you guys know, I'm back to doing the Bulgarian training again, and just for the record, uh, a number of people have come in and said, oh, you're copying Bugenhagen and other things, and it's like, guys, I did Bulgarian training before Eric had a channel. And that's not taking anything away from what he's doing, but I have run this type of training before, four years ago. Four years ago, right? You guys remember that? So I'm not stealing it from any other YouTube channels. Other YouTube channels bigger than his have run this stuff uh, even as far back as a year ago. I mean, Omar Isoff. Mike Rashid, all these people have utilized variations of this training. Uh, and it's always had a degree of popularity. And I've always said that if your schedule and life and recovery allows for it, it is a superior way to gain strength. Uh, I've always been a big fan. It's just not everyone's a lifestyle, and even mine at certain times hasn't allowed for it. But one of the things that I've noted here is that I've noticed that sometimes strength stalls quicker when you do the exact same lift five or six days a week, like tr trying to hit training maxes. Now, the situation can be different for that for a very, very advanced lifter doing very technical movements like Olympic lifts, uh, which is originally how this system was designed. But even then, they do do rotations day to day. And what I noticed is that uh, when I came back and I was doing it with just my pause squats, I definitely gained strength every week, but I also plateaued. I saw massive bursts in strength, then I plateaued at the three week mark and have then had a slight regression, and it's getting harder to hit those lifts and I'm trying to ramp back up a little bit. So I've had to reduce weight slightly, do a little more of my daily minimums and so on. Whereas I have consistently improved all of my pressing. So what's the difference here? Uh, the difference here is that I've been rotating my pressing every other day been rotating my pressing every other day. So I had been doing floor press alternated with the press. A lot of you think of as the strict standing press. It's actually the name for that exercise. It's just called the press. If we go back to historical definitions. Uh, but just there's so many types of presses now that uh, people get confused on that name. But the thing I noticed is that also these lifts that I was only doing around three times a week versus five or six increased at a higher percentage uh, than say my squats did. So in this case, I noticed the value of exercise variation. I also noticed that I had less DOMS, uh, less soreness as a result of that. So what I had decided to do is to, again, go the other direction now with my squatting. So actually this week, because of that, of just my observation on that, because I've done this in the past and I've also uh, done it to where I only bench three times a week and then other stuff in the past, and my bench went up pretty good doing that. So the thing is, on this, I did all of that, and that actually built my bench press back up. I went back and started bench pressing this week again, as you guys saw from that other video, and what happened? I'm setting bench PRs. I'm benching 50 pounds more uh, than I was just a, a few months ago when I started flat benching again, after taking all that time off from any sort of chest pressing. A uh, very long time off. But the floor presses and the strict standing presses have gone up, and that was the other thing that was interesting. Uh, my overhead press dramatically improved by doing the floor press, alternating with it, with it every workout. And I think the difference here goes to show that even on ultra high frequency training, having a little bit of exercise variation and not always doing the same lift every day back to back, uh, which is what people like Jamie Lewis noted when he did this, was that it does allow for more consistent strength increases. And that doesn't mean that you need to cut the primary lift out. In other words, you don't want to stop back squatting, but alternating it through and maybe only back squatting to a max three days a week and doing some squat variation on the other days. And it doesn't have to be consistent. In this case, I'm going to run front squats for a while, but if that stalls, you can always rotate down another lift. And the whole point here is that you can pick lifts at either give you a slightly different movement pattern so that you recover slightly differently or that hit your weak links a little bit more on that exercise. Uh, for example, if you've been bench pressing and your triceps have become a weak link, you might switch over to a more tricep dominant exercise. 
might switch to a more tricep dominant exercise. If your pecs become a weak link, maybe a more pectoral stretch exercise. I don't know, maybe more pause benching if you're not. Maybe weighted dips. Again, another exercise where you can kind of try to get a little bit of a stretch reflex in your pecs. So that's kind of the point is that you can fill in the weak links by doing these other lifts and you don't necessarily have to treat them as accessory work. And that's the interesting thing when you start doing heavy uh, max effort everyday training systems like this, everything can be treated like a primary lift. In other words, get maximally strong on your exercise variations and as those strengths go up, it will start to carry back over to your primary lift. So if your front squat starts going up and your quads have been the weak link in your squat, then your squat will start to go back up also. And if once you start stalling at the front squat, you could rotate something else in to replace it. The same thing when you're doing your pressing variation or pulling variations. Because I've noticed the same thing on my pin lay rows. Uh, when I get deep into the week, if I've pin lay rowed three or four days in a row, I'm not as strong as I was earlier in the week. Uh, definitely not as strong. Now, obviously, I, I replaced one of those days with a deadlift, but I do notice that. And so with the same thing with the pin leg rows. I'm going to have to start rotating in a little more chin-ups or maybe power cleans again. Again, because you start to stall a little bit. And these accessory movements, as they become a new movement, you have to learn the new motor pattern. As the strength goes up and you adapt, you sometimes gain a little bit of muscle in those key areas. And that can carry over to your main lift. And so that's kind of the whole point, because even though this sort of training is always going to be minimalism, uh, because you do want a high degree of specificity, it doesn't mean you only want to do four exercises throughout the week, because you will invariably stall. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't still make progress doing that, because uh, everyone who runs a style of training always gets stronger as long as their recovery, diet, sleep, and all of that is in check. Uh, and again, they're, they're technically correct on their exercises. So there are people who can run these systems and yeah, literally only do three exercises, four exercises and still progress very, very well. But we kind of go back to the point of they're also going to be slightly more prone to overuse injuries. They're going to be slightly more prone to stalling on those lifts. So that's kind of your concern there as well. So that's what I would advise on any of these lifts uh, is that in many cases, once you kind of have these lifts down and they start to stall, you really want to cut back to only doing your main lift maybe three days a week and then use some variation on your other days. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing a four or five or a six day a week high frequency training, even if you're doing big lifts uh, four days a week, say squatting four days a week pulling four days a week, you're still doing a variation of this same concept of Bulgaria and Light, particularly if they're all heavy days. Uh, so again, learning to rotate in those variations can help fill in weak gaps in your musculature. They can help uh, reduce injury rates and all of those things. Now, what I don't mean by exercise variations is doing it west side style. That's where people mess up with this sort of training. Uh, because again, they'll go in and they'll do all these partials or accommodating resistance. And what you're going to find if you're a raw lifter, that isn't going to make you stronger. Just like what we've seen with guys like um, Alpha Destiny who tries to do that. What you're going to find is that his bench press has probably gotten weaker. He may have gotten stronger and stronger and stronger on all these accommodating resistance lifts. You know, reverse band benching and slingshot benching with chains and whatever else, board presses. But that doesn't carry over to your raw bench press. An actual strict standing press and a weighted dip carries over more. And he's actually decently strong at those other lifts, but doesn't do them enough. Did all those exercise variations. And I promise you that guy's still a 300 pound bencher. That guy can't bench 320 legitimately uh, if his life depended on it because he goes the wrong direction in those variations. So I don't mean variations by doing it west side style with accommodating resistance. I mean variations that will actually carry over to your raw lifts. In other words, a front squat or a safety bar squat or a pause squat is a good variation for your regular barbell squat, right? Because they carry over. A strict standing press, a floor press, a dip will carry over to your bench press, particularly if they're all done full range of motion. So this is what I mean by doing exercise variations. Variations that will actually put size and strength on you, will get you stronger at your weakest joint angles, uh, and will fill in the weak gaps for you so that you get all around generally strong on a little bit of variety of exercises. Uh, and then if you're still doing your big lifts, training to a max 
any lift that you're doing three days a week to a max, that is still very high specificity training. So very high specificity training like this can still train for general all around strength, but still put a focus on the lifts that you want to improve the most by making sure that you do them heavy uh, three days a week. So there's a lot of different ways to look at this, but again, there is a certain amount of value of rotating in exercise variations as necessary to uh, prevent overuse injuries, to fill in weak links, uh, to get a little bit around the law of accommodation that really affects advanced lifters a lot. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.